Hey, it's Mike here, and today, bones. Again, yes, this might be a little bit of a deja vu topic, but I promise you we are talking about a newer study here that a ton of you messaged me about and emailed me about, which really helps, so definitely keep those messages going. In particular, this study has prompted news headlines such as vegetarian women have a 33% increased risk of bone fractures, and of course, social media loves any type of anti-veg pro-meat information, so, I'm sure it's spread quite a bit on there. And of course, anything vaguely vegetarian will be used against vegans, but there are some distinctions here for vegans in this study, and we'll get into those details, as well as the things that are very important that didn't make it, of course, into the headlines. So we're gonna look into this study, crack it open, learn some stuff, so let's just go. And in case you're wondering, I am actually in Iceland. We just hiked a waterfall and it's been really epic. And I've been trying to make this video during the course of this trip, but the itinerary has been so full and amazing, packed with things like glacier hikes and going on amphibious vehicles through a bunch of ice and it's cool stuff like that. So this was the first opportunity I had to make it. So here we go. Here's a study and it was published in Biomed Central's Medicine Journal and it was looking at the UK women's cohort, which was about 26,000 women, which they followed for a median of 20 years about. And like many of these epidemiological studies, they used food frequency questionnaires and then also got some basic information like people's age, whether they smoked or not. And of course, those types of confounding variables like BMI become very important. And we're obviously gonna talk about that later. And they looked at a few diets. They looked at regular meat eaters. They looked at pescatarians, lower meat eaters, vegetarians, and vegans, however, it is the case that they just lumped vegans and vegetarians together. And that brings up a very important and very obvious point, and that is that because there were so few vegans and there were way more vegetarians, we're talking about a vegetarian group. Specific claims cannot be made about vegans here, and vegetarians really just eat very differently than vegans in terms of the amount of animal fat and saturated fat they intake, as you already know, and that leads to several different outcomes. And to vegetarians' credit, there is one point that I need to just immediately start this off with before we get even into the bone stuff. And that has to do with just the ridiculously lower disease rate that the vegetarians had than the regular meat eaters. We're talking about essentially half or 43% lower rates of cardiovascular disease, cancer, or diabetes. These are the leading killers, yet that wasn't mentioned in any of the articles that I saw, funnily. It is worth mentioning that that is not an adjusted figure, but you know things like smoking rate are equivalent, but it could change with other factors. And the results, as you know, the vegetarians had a 33% increased risk of hip fracture. Other groups did not vary. I could just stop there and say, yeah, vegetarians have an increased risk of some bone fractures, but their disease rate is so much lower. We already know from other studies that it is way lower that, you know, it's just worth it to have an increased risk, but we still have to ask, is this actually an accurate representation or was there something going on with confounders and differences between these groups? So let's get into that. And the first one that is always the most connected here appears to be BMI. The authors of the study guessed that it could be nutritionally related, such as vitamin D intake, B12 intake, et cetera, being lower in the vegetarian group. But the sort of red flag for that is that the BMI cut off over 23.5, I don't know why they chose that, showed no increased risk of fractures for people in the vegetarian group. So it was like, were they getting enough nutrients and the people who are lower BMI weren't, or could it also be something related to the actual physical bodies of these people? A couple things come up, first of all, Heavier weight increases bone density just based off the stress on bones. Increasing, you know, more stress equals denser bones. And then also we have the just general cushion concept that they even mention in the study that if you have a little bit of extra fat, then you can catch yourself when you fall. They say, quote, inadequate fat mass may reduce cushioning from impact force at the hip during falls, which accounts for 90% of hip fractures. Which brings me to another potential issue, and that is that even if they are matched for BMI or they're adjusting for BMI in these groups, you can still have a different BMI distribution. You know, one curve might look like that on the lower spectrum and one curve might be more round. And so if you have more people at a much lower BMI, those people can be more prone to hip fractures regardless of what diet they were eating, you know, compared to people being more evenly distributed across a lower BMI, maybe toward the middle. 
So this entire result could simply be from there being more lower weight vegetarians, whether they decided to go vegetarian before or after they were that weight, doesn't matter, that could shift the result. Now, for example, people with eating disorders and lower fat mass might choose a vegetarianism. That would have to be studied further. And to emphasize this BMI effect, as this nature study mentions, no, weight loss is associated with an 84% increased risk of hip fracture. And in contrast, weight gain was associated with about a 27% decreased risk of hip fracture. And in terms of the actual BMI of people in the study, to be specific, the vegetarians averaged a 23 BMI and the meat eater group actually averaged in the overweight category at 25.3. And beyond that, it is important to just note the BMI differences that we tend to see between these diet groups and that the groups with less fractures are tending to be on the higher end. And that brings me to this chart. You know, we have vegans and then we have vegetarians and then we have pescatarians and then we have your standard meat eater there going higher up. And that brings me to the vegies, the vegans, they were not large enough of a group to have their own full statistically significant category but their average was only 10% higher than normal. You know, in this case, it's possible that it wouldn't have even been different if the group was larger, but we have no idea because the group was not larger. And that makes sense because this started in sort of like the mid nineties back when veganism had yet to sort of catch on as much as it did. So hopefully we'll have some bigger studies in the future. Now let's quickly cover vitamin D and B12 because calcium was not different between these groups. If it was, I'm sure they would have pointed to that, but they say it could be these two. And looking to the chart, yeah, it does appear that the vegetarians were eating you know, considerably less of these, but that was just an estimate based off food intake questionnaires. So we don't really know what their levels were if they were truly lower. And the ultimate concern for vegans is always B12, but thankfully it appears we've nipped that one in the butt by people taking B12 and fortified food and on and on because study after study has been showing that vegans have been kicking butt and not being statistically significantly lower. So heck yeah. But now we need to look at protein because that conversation article was like, hey, these vegetarians need to get more protein. I was like, what? But from the chart, yeah, apparently 10% of that vegetarian group wasn't getting the recommended 0.75 grams per kilogram of body weight of protein per day. However, it was essentially the same situation for the low meat and pescatarian groups who didn't have a fracture difference. So I think it's very unlikely to be the culprit. And they briefly point to a, another potential factor causing this, which I think is interesting because I talk about it a lot, and that is IGF-1 or insulin-like growth factor one. They say, oh, the vegetarians might be lower because they're potentially consuming less animal protein, and that could be you know, not making their bones as dense. And yeah, IGF-1 does play a role in bone density, bone creation in terms of structure, but the question is, would any dietary difference be enough to lead to more fractures? Well, from this study, a pretty large difference in IGF-1 didn't make much of a difference in fractures, really nothing compared to BMI differences, so unlikely to be the culprit. I would also add that there's definitely some doubt here in terms of IGF-1 being the cause, especially looking to a study like this, where vegetarians had the same level of IGF-1 essentially, as people that ate meat, so no difference possibly there. So it is of course worth mentioning that IGF-1 also plays a role in every stage of cancer growth and spreading. So it would be horrible if people were like, IGF-1 is something we need to like skyrocket the levels of so that we can prevent some hip fractures here and there and then just be like feeling all this cancer. No, please don't. And another point worth mentioning is that looking through the conflicts of interest, it does not appear that this was funded by any meat related agency that just wants to take down vegetarianism. You know, the pork board didn't get together and sit around a table and go like, let's design a study where we show a, a moderate increased risk of hip fracture in vegetarians. That's gonna make everybody buy more of our product. In the end, I think we have two possible scenarios here. One is that people on a vegetarian diet do have a somewhat increased risk of getting hip fractures, but it also comes with a massively lower risk of certain diseases, major diseases or leading killing diseases here. So we have two different avenues you can go down. You know, like a higher bone density lifestyle with higher disease or a slightly lower bone density with way lower disease. And then the second option is just that there is no true dietary difference here. It's just that 
were looking at two different groups with different metrics and they mistaked some difference in BMI distribution or some other confounder with an actual difference in bone fracture risk. But I think it's good to emphasize that, you know, vegans as well should make sure that you're getting all that vitamin D and enough B12 and everybody should be getting that exercise so that we can maintain some healthy bones, especially because people who are older getting a hip fracture can be more life-threatening than people my age would be thinking it is. And of course, there are actually things you can do to lower your risk for bone density, such as lift heavy weights, make sure you have impact, and just be safe on the ice and things like that. And I also wanna add here that Dr. Tushar Mehta was very helpful in researching this. And a point that he made was that even just choosing soy milk over some other plant milks due to its you know, calcium and consistent fortification would be another good way to go. So keep those bones hard. <laughs> Feel free to let me know what you think down below about all of this. Thank you so much for recommending this. And I know this video might seem a little scrambled because I've literally like, figuring out what to say as we were going from waterfall to glacier and all that stuff. And I'm super grateful to be able to do this traveling in Iceland and everybody on this trip has been super awesome and we've eaten a ton of delicious food. And I will do at least a short video about it so you can see that and feel free to like and subscribe and all that good stuff. And I will see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.